let's drop all of our food except for say a day in case in case we don't make it <laughs> what do you want to do with the sleeping stuff we're gonna drop everything and we're not gonna stop till we get there so we might as well throw everything out of the plane and so we don't have to carry it we'll just go fast and light so we drop it we got nothing to sleep with we're committed we're <laughs> we go till we get there it's full commitment we don't stop till we're there all right adventure race style it's been a long time since I've been sheep hunting. I'm going to say about 10 years and a large part of that is just we've got two kids and I was always doing my own racing too and businesses so it was just busy and so actually this whole COVID thing was a good chance to have an opportunity um, with no races this year and still seeking that adventure and that ability to push myself so this just kind of all came together. The mountains are calling. Let's finish our coffee and let's get going. It's gonna be a warm one today. I know, we're not used to this. No. It'll be crazy. Have you ever started a sheep hunt in shorts? I barely get to wear shorts any day, let alone <laughs> sheep hunting. <laughs> it uh, must be my good luck. We'll take it, it'll be good luck. It's time to get back in the mountains. And... All right, let's do it. Oh, <laughs> oh you're heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you guys be good. Be good for grandma. Okay. Please sit down. Don't fight. All right, yeah, catch a big one. Thanks. I don't think we're gonna catch him, but. <laughs> Bye, Dad. Whatever you Thanks, do, guys. Yeah. Mom said, good catch luck. a big one. I said, I don't think we're gonna catch him. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. There we go. Cooking. We better enjoy the shade while we've got it. You want to get the poles out? So grab some food while we're here. Okay, we should eat something like every 45 minutes, especially you. Yeah, we don't want the meltdown to come too early. When you melt down, it goes down hard and quick. I figure 12, 12 to 16 hours. Count on 16. Yeah. And then if it's 12, it's never less. Count on 20 then. <laughs> Better eat up then. So I come from a background of uh, endurance racing, so multi-sport, number of five, six days, and it's just kind of part of who I am. It's what I like to do. Uh, there's something about it that just um, provides a challenge and you get to figure out um, just a little bit more what you're made of and it brings out uh, the best in you most of the time. So I normally do 50, 100 mile races. So this is a perfect way to kind of start a hunt in that kind of style. How far do you think we're in, Greg? Right? 16 and a half K, so just over 10 miles. It's another 30 or so miles to go to the airdrop. Got a lot of elevation here in the first quarter, so that's great. In the haze, that's where we're going, but you can't see the mountain that we're going that's to. That's not good for sheep hunting. <laughs> At this distance, it isn't. So we're about quarter of the way there, I think. Yeah, it's a lot of the ways downhill right now until we're right into the mountain block. Okay. You feeling good? Yeah, I feel good. Okay, let's, let's go. keep going. We got a long day ahead of us, though. 
it's uh, a conserving energy pace. You know, we're starting to get into sheep country when sheep are up there. Look at them running around, eh? Super active for 12 o'clock. Yeah, look at them at the top there. Yeah. See them all? Yeah. I see six, seven, eight. And look at these ones down below. These guys low. are playing down here. Nine, 10, 11. That's pretty cool. I don't think those are our sheep, though. We're only halfway to where no. we're going. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Which way are we going? This way. Let's go. <laughs> okay. We're starting to get into spectacular country. I've already seen some sheep and we're still a long ways from our spot, but we're getting there. We'll be there tonight for sure. Feels good. I'm just starting to feel the miles a little bit because when I bend down to fill the bottle, it's like, ooh. Do you feel that? Yeah, that was a kilometer one though. <laughs> <laughs> was feeling the energy drain because we haven't eaten enough. Just before you said it, I was kind of like, well, okay. It's like we're so in tune with each well, other. We're, we're right on the same wavelength. <laughs> same wavelength. It happens 26 years. You've been carrying a heavy load 26 <laughs> years. And you're doing it today. Your pack is, I know. Your pack is heavier. I know. <laughs> Just like the good old days. It's like every day. I want to believe it's over halfway, but I did draw it out straight lines, so. Yeah, it's over halfway. It's over halfway for sure. Well, if we only go straight from now on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and no elevation change. Mm -hmm. Feels good to stop, doesn't it? <laughs> Air the feet out. <laughs> uh, yeah, it does. But we can't stop for long because no. we have a very long way to go. And uh, remember, where you airdrop the, all of the sleeping gear. Yes. This would have been a lovely place to camp down by the lake. <laughs> I think anywhere right about now would be a lovely place to camp. I figure we'll be at the airdrop somewhere between 12 and 2. Okay. It's good to get that in your head right now. Yeah. I think either we go high, high, yeah. or we go down into this timber. This doesn't look awesome at the top either. No. So we need to get to the end of the lake. A big part of cross-country navigation is good route finding, and sometimes that's not necessarily a straight line. It's picking the best, uh, most efficient route through the bush. And also, at some point, you have to just kind of pick a path and go with it, and you don't want to stop every few hundred meters and second guess what you decide on. So at some point, you just have to kind of pick a line, find the best route around things, and just go for it. So I think it was a good decision uh, that we made to stay low, because had we gone high, we would have had to drop down to all those valleys and then more climbing and up and down, up and down. So I think this was a good choice to stay low. So we'll keep going. We're getting there. We've got more lake behind us than we do ahead of us. That's good. <laughs> we aren't far from where we're gonna cut in off the, the end of the lake there. Like that's only a mile. Yeah. I think that was a really good call to come up this way versus stay down. Yeah, it was actually not that bad through there. It was way thinner than I thought it was gonna be. And now we're up top, so. Beautiful to put the lake behind us. Yeah. We're gonna crest here and then we're gonna see the hunting zone. It's okay. just right there. Okay, let's go find it. Oh, look at that, there it is. <laughs> Does it look close? It looks so close. Fifty-five k in. Yeah, we're about thirteen and a half hours on our feet so far. <laughs> we have about ten k or so to go. Yeah, to the airdrop. And that's where it is. All right. Well, let's get moving <laughs> before you get eaten live. And before the sun goes down. Yeah. Straight down here.
midnight. Still not there. Uh, we have another five or so K left. Yeah. We're 65 K in. It's taking a little longer than we expected. Well, and it's not going to be any faster at night. So 3 a.m. is the estimated time of arrival at a tent. Well, All right, we threw those out of the plane. Oh, I guess I wanted some adventure racing style. I'm exactly. getting what I asked for, apparently. <laughs> you requested this. <laughs> yeah, you guys can thank me later. Time's it get light. <laughs> We've been pretty much talking about this bag right here all day. I feel pretty excited about this. <laughs> this is a really big deal. Yes. And unfortunately, it's uh, closer to four o'clock. Tough nav, tough bush. Yeah. Like, wait. I'm not expecting that. Let's get some food and get in the sleeping bag. 75K today. This is actually day one now. Right, we <laughs> had a full day of uh, 75K yeah. to get here. Yeah. And now we're starting the hunt. When uh, Greg asked me what kind of hunt I wanted to do, I thought I wanted to do something that started really cool with a long kind of run trek. And I got that yesterday. <laughs> I think it, it ended up being a little bit harder than we all thought. We were committed to the destination. So in some ways that's good because it leaves you with no choice. So it's at two o'clock in the morning and you have to keep going. Otherwise it's easy to kind of, oh, we'll stop and sleep now. So we made it eventually. And that's the commitment part. Make the decision and follow through and don't deviate from the plan. And that's why we're here day before the season right now. Yeah. Just coming up on a creek, which will be the last chance to get any water before we start heading up the mountain. And I don't know what's up there. There are some snow packs, but we'll see what's up. Take your time. Look for flat rocks to step on. A big part of the um, sports that I do requires a lot of mental toughness and Greg and I raced together for a number of years. Cut to the right behind this big rock and that'll give you a reprieve. So part of this was just to see if I still have that mental toughness. You start to wonder if you're kind of losing your edge a little bit. So last night was a great uh, chance to kind of get into that mental headspace again and it totally felt like an adventure race. So it was awesome actually. I mean, there's parts of it when it's not awesome, but when you get there and you accomplish the goal, uh, it's pretty amazing. Tomorrow's the day, the day that I spend all year waiting for. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'm pretty... and this is cool, I get to experience that with you. Well, I'm pretty excited that it's you that's gonna get to pull the trigger on opening day and not me. Well. Let's go that way. Probably one of the things I worry about the most is just um, making a good shot when it comes to the time. I've spent quite a bit of time at the range and I feel pretty confident uh, in my shooting. But it's one thing to be at the range in a comfy position and you know there's no pressure or anything. Um, and then you get up there and you never know what the situation is. It can be howling wind or rain and um, you don't have a good position. So. Um, and then just the pressure of wanting to make a good shot and make it quick and easy. So I'm definitely, that's on the back of my mind a little bit, but um, we've got some work to do before that. So I'll try not to worry about that too much yet. Uh, maybe up that little rocky patch and then it kind of weaves through the brush there. Yeah, so once we go upside those bushes where you're pointing, then we'll just hit the ridge line and then just up to the top. All right. Check us out. Good spot. Let's try 
Alright, we're in death. That's pretty cool. That's a good spot. Huh? What can I say? It just comes naturally. Yeah, that was cool. She came in. I kind of thought, thought she'd run away. Oh, she came in closer to check us out. You're so curious. Yeah. yeah. And then they just kind of prance off. Mm Over a number of hours, we made it to the top. It was a crazy hot day for the Yukon. Like, I think it's the hottest day of the summer. And I figured that these sheep would be right up on top. So we climbed to the top of the mountain straight away and we dropped our packs. Just wanted to kind of pick apart foot by foot this basin and eventually just sat down thinking that well, we needed to wait for a few hours before it cooled down enough for them, the sheep to start to move around. See the bottom two snowpacks? No, way far right, bottom two, they're just, they go like this, like two little slivers. Yep, down low, the furthest one to the right. See them standing right in the middle of it? Yep. They've been underneath us here, and just sitting here, and then all of a sudden they just started popping out one by one. on them the day before opening, so. This was the plan. We'll see if the rest of the plan comes together tomorrow morning. You can see that there's water down there. Yeah. So even in this heat, they've got all the water. There's no reason for them to leave there. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see them, them move up, up this way. Yeah, we just have to have the weather hold. I mean, it's possibly supposed to rain tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well, that could play to our advantage in a lot of ways, really, because if there's, you know, if it's raining, their senses aren't as as acute, I don't think, because they can't hear anything, right. for sure. Yeah, yeah. They're just listening to the rain like everybody else, and it's all about visual. I don't have a problem if it's raining at all. It'd be advantageous to us, I think. How do you see stock going up with the stock? I suspect that they've moved up a little bit and just probably bedded down. Hopefully we can pick them up without them picking us up because it is that, you know, every step you take, you're looking and you've got so much ground to cover, mm -hmm. to look at. The problem is, is there's 14 of them. That's the challenging part is there's a lot of eyes down there. It's gonna be a challenge tomorrow. There's no guarantees in this this one where they are right now, I can tell you. Tomorrow will be a big day. It's your favorite day of the year. <laughs> tomorrow is my favorite day of the year. Other than our anniversary. Of course. <laughs> that goes without saying, no. <laughs> Clearly. They're down there. We know where they are somewhere down there. It's just a matter of us doing all the right things to put it together tomorrow. <laughs> 